Hey, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and today I'm going to be trying to explain to you guys some of the weather mechanics in Poke MMO. So, I think this is going to be the start of a series where I go through each weather in Poke MMO and explain different specific team comps and the way people play them and kind of general a general overview of each type of weather in Poke MMO. But this video is going to try to be a cover over the weather rain. So rain is easily probably the most common weather you're going to see in Pokemon MMO. You often hear rain teams are a quick way to easy turbo stomp OU or even UU or NU or kind of any meta. Um, rain is a very uh, easy type of team to pilot for the most part, uh, at least in terms of if you're not a great Pokemon player, picking up rain and piloting it at a low elo is going to be really easy to quickly climb up. It's just the raw power of rain is going to overpower a lot of the kind of quick skills you're going to need to get into the game and learning a lot of the game. Just the raw power of rain is just going to kind of try to override that. So something to consider. Now, I'm not personally a fan of rain just due to the, you know, what it does. It kind of skips a lot of the learning you need to do in the game. Uh, it's a very powerful thing. It's very unfun, in my opinion, but it is very powerful, and it's important to understand how to counter rain, how to deal with it, and what it does. Knowing what it does is a crucial part of understanding it and how to play against it. So first things first, there is only one Pokemon within Pokemon Mo, at least that I'm aware of. I could be wrong, and you could leave corrections in the comments but i'm pretty sure this is correct there's only one pokemon within pokemon mo that has the ability drizzle which drizzle is an ability that when that pokemon enters battle it summons rain so it kind of takes away that need to have rain dance on that pokemon and it also saves you a free turn now this pokemon is going to be pelipper and honestly pelipper having drizzle Basically, on its own, in my personal opinion, makes it OU. If this Pokemon didn't have Drizzle, it would easily be an NU Pokemon, like, no doubt. But the fact that this thing has Drizzle, like, that's how strong weather is and how strong rain is and how strong weather summoning abilities are. The fact that this thing has Drizzle basically makes it OU alone, at least in my personal opinion. You see the base stats of Pe Pelipper, and it doesn't look like much. You know, meter, 60 base HP, 100 base defense, that's quite good. 95 base special attack, that's pretty good. 70 base special defense, not super great, especially being a water flying type, which is four times weak to electric. Also, 65 speed, pretty, pretty rough. Especially in OU, a 65 speed Pokemon operating in OU with this little bulk and this, like, meter of attack, special attack, it's... It's, it's, it's a miracle this thing can work, but the reason it does is because of Drizzle and because of Rain. So Rain enables a lot of things. For those who don't know, there are a lot of abilities and moves revolving around weather, but let's go ahead and cover what Rain does at its core and at its basis, ignoring other synergies. Okay, I'm going to actually do a quick overview of everything that Rain does and then go through each checkpoint one by one. So this is everything that Rain affects. Rain increases the damage of water type moves by 50%, decreases the damage of fire type moves by 50%, makes it so Thunder and Hurricane, the moves, are 100% accurate. It also activates the abilities Dry Skin, Forecast, Hydration, Rain Dish, Swift Swim, and causes Forecast uh, to change Cast Form's form, but that's kind of irrelevant. It also makes the Weather Ball move a Water type and doubles its power. It also halves the damage and power of Solar Beam and Solar Blade. It also causes Moonlight, Synthesis, and Morning Sun to recover one-fourth of max HP as opposed to half. That is insane. To do all of those things in one move, let alone to have a Pokemon come into the battle and just enter the battle and make all of those effects come into play. Talk about power. Whew. All right, so let's cover the first thing, which is just increases the damage of water types move by 50%. 50% is huge. For those who don't know, there's a reason why choice band and choice uh, specs are so good. They are items that kind of lock you out of your move selection. So Choice Band is an item that increases your attack by 50%, but then it only lets you be able to select one move for the rest of that battle until you switch out that Pokemon. Um, think about having that damage bonus on Water-type moves while also having the ability of, like, 
to switch around your moveset. 50% is a huge damage increase, and I can't overstate that more. Decreasing the damage of fire types by 50% or fire type moves by 50%. This is definitely huge. Uh, it's very, very important, but at the same time, it's a little less important than it would seem. It's maybe one of the lesser important factors on this list, uh, at least in terms of especially Rain's offensive power. We'll get into the next one, which is the next one might be, in my opinion, the most uh, powerful part of this list. So Rain increases Thunder and Hurricane's accuracy to 100%. So that is insane. And it's also insane because it allows things like Pelipper, which we've already talked about, to run Hurricane, which is stab flying for this thing. And that's part of why Pelipper becomes so good, is that this thing now gets to run like Hydro Pump and Hurricane to do insane damage and also have decent accuracy on both. It, it really just gets to kind of be risky without being risky actually because there's not much of an accuracy drop at all for hurricane and the accuracy drop for hydro pump is only 80 percent as opposed to like the 70 percent uh, of hurricane and such so for those who don't know a hurricane is a 110 base power special attacking flying move with normally 70 percent accuracy obviously rain boosts it to 100 percent also, it has a 30% chance to confuse the foe, which comes into play much more than I would like. And then Hydro Pump is a 110 base power water special attacking move with 80% accuracy, which the accuracy doesn't get boosted by Rain Dance, but the power does. And seeing a 110 base power water move get boosted by 50% on top of the 50% of stab, and then if you really want, like adding a choice spec to do more damage, that is just going to one shot whatever it hits 80% of the time. So just the fact that Pelipper can come in, not have to waste that turn setting up Rain Dance, have Drizzle come in when he comes in, and then be able to absolutely demolish his foes with a very, very boosted Hydro Pump or a 100% uh, accuracy boosted uh, Hurricane on top of it having the chance to confuse. It's just, it really just makes this Pokemon so powerful and so insane for a Pokemon that if this Pokemon didn't have Drizzle, it would just so easily be NU. Like the fact that this Pokemon has Drizzle just makes it so much more powerful. I can't, I can't overstate that enough. But in my opinion, that accuracy increase on Thunder and Hurricane definitely makes, like, that's definitely the most powerful part of rain in my opinion and i haven't even gotten to swift swim yet which i think most people will consider the most powerful part of rain dance some common thunder threats that could really abuse that within the kind of a rain dance setting could be things like rotom wash uh starmie and then something like magnezone the reason being is all those pokemon have access to thunder uh, Rotom Wash getting stabbed to his Thunder, uh, Starmie just having that access to Thunder while on top of having boosted damage on other water moves. Also, Rotom has damage boosted on water moves if he doesn't need to use Thunder. Uh, Magnezone is good because it's going to be decreased damage on fire moves during the Rain Dance, and he's going to have increased Thunder, so he becomes safe from fire moves, which would usually hurt him a ton, on top of having that boosted Thunder accuracy. So there's a ton of Pokemon that aren't you wouldn't necessarily think of in a rain dance team that just get so much power propelled um with rain dance because it's just it's just so strong dude i can't overstate that enough it's it's so strong but let's go ahead and get into the next point of rain dance which is going to be activating different abilities the first ability we're going to be talking about is dry skin so dry skin is an ability that kind of you the pokemon would lose hp during sunlight but then during rain it would heal hp and it can also kind of soak water attacks so you can swap this pokemon in against a water attack it kind of has both water absorb while also having rain dish at the same time so it passively heals during rain while also being able to absorb water attack it's kind of like two abilities in one but then it also has the negative effect of losing HP during sunlight. Dry skin sounds like an insane ability on paper, and it kind of is. The only issue is that in Pokemon Mo, only two Pokemon can learn dry skin, at least to my understanding and to my awareness, those two Pokemon being Parasect and uh, Toxicroak. So these are two untiered Pokemon, uh, although I do think that Toxicroak, in my opinion, is pretty good in NU. 
um, especially underrated. Uh, Parasect is decent. I think also underrated in NU, maybe not being good, but being a 100% spore user with dry skin uh, or effect spore and stuff like that. And NU is is pretty good. Having yeah, it's 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 underrated for for sure, at least in my opinion. But dry skin won't be a factor for many players, at least in Pokemon Mo, as it's only on two Pokemon that are in untiered. Uh, basically, it's just water absorb plus uh, rain dish together. So that basically covers that. Let's go ahead and head on to the next ability to cover quickly, which is going to be forecast. So forecast is super quick and easy because it's only learned by one Pokemon in the entire game, cast form, which is an abysmal Pokemon in absolutely all facets. Forecast basically says this Pokemon changes form based on the weather upon entry, I believe. So it's basically just going to change to either uh, cast form fire, cast form water, cast form uh, normal, etc., etc. Doesn't really matter. No one's going to run cast form. Don't worry about it. All right, the next ability we're going to be talking about is Hydration, which basically heals a status problem at the end of the turn if it is raining. So this is a good kind of semi-quasi permanent Lumberry effect, at least permanent if rain is up. Uh, it's a pretty good ability. Uh, it's pretty strong. The only issue is that it's not on in any Pokemon. The only real Pokemon that it's on that are going to be a quote-unquote threat is mostly going to be Excelgor. Excelgor is a pretty fantastic Pokemon, very underrated in NU in my opinion. But other than Excelgor, the only real Pokemon you're going to see it on is going to be Dugong. Uh, and then there are some pre-evolution Pokemon that use it, such as like Wingall. Uh, I think Palpitoad, maybe uh, Shelmet, but like, you know, those won't really matter. Uh, those aren't super important. Actually, Alola Mola might learn it as well, which would be pretty important because that is a pretty huge wall threat within the NU tier. Yeah, Alola Mola actually learns it as well, which probably is going to make it the best uh, user of hydration within the game. Maybe alongside at Celador, those two. Uh, but they're still only both going to be taking place in the NU tier, so if you don't play NU... Uh, it's probably not going to matter to you much at all. These are basically just Pokemon that Excelgor is going to help him sweep with hydration. It's going to help him stay healthy. It's going to help him use water moves, although I don't know what water moves he's going to have access to. He might have like water pulse uh, or some. Alola Mola is going to help a ton more. It's going to give Alola Mola's uh, moves like Aqua Jet, and I think it has Scald uh, a ton more damage, which is super, super nice, especially Scald on a Pokemon like Alola Mola where it's a wall and it's trying to like just annoy its opponent and get, get that getting that burn with scald is is, is super nice uh so using olamola mola as a tanky rain dance setter is is pretty huge and i think pretty powerful in in nu and i think it's probably the best use of hydration in the entire game at least in my opinion you kind of use it as a semi quasi natural cure uh pokemon kind of like uh you know the kind of ou walls that have it or something like starmie uh, I think it's a pretty powerful thing. Uh, you just don't see it outside of NU. Okay, now moving on to some of the more powerful ones, or at least Swift Swim. We're going to move on to Rain Dish and Swift Swim abilities. Ludicolo learns both of these, so we're going to quickly use him to kind of cover them both. So Rain Dish is similar to Dry Skin, which we've already talked about, where it gradually regains HP and rain. It kind of acts as another Leftovers on top of that. If you can, you can have Leftovers plus Rain Dish. Uh, active if you want on a Pokemon to you know gain a lot of HP at the end of each turn but Swift Swim is where rain becomes really powerful and this is what a lot of people consider the most powerful rain uh, effect in the entire game I personally think the accuracy boost to Thunder and Hurricane is pretty insane but Swift Sim's another one where Swift Sim is going to double speed while it's raining Doubling a Pokemon's speed is absolutely bonkers. People put things like Choice Scarf on a Pokemon to increase their speed by 50%, let alone 100%, just for having Rain Up, absolutely crazy. Especially the amount of insanely powerful Pokemon that can learn Swift Swim is kind of stupid in my opinion. Some of the most powerful Pokemon that you're going to be seeing use Swift Swim are going to be insane. The main one being Kingdra. This Pokemon having Swift Swim is crazy. It being Water Dragon already makes it an incredibly difficult Pokemon to kill with its typing, let alone on top of its base stats, let alone on top of its move pool, and what having access to something like Octazooka or other crazy things. This Pokemon is... An absolute pain in the butt. I absolutely hate Kingdra. It's it's one of the reasons why I don't play OU personally. Things like Kingdra and Scizor really keep me out of the tier. 
this Pokemon has insane bulk while kind of, it's always going to do kind of what you expect it to do. It's always going to go throw up a water move and then a dragon move. It's going to have those stab moves. It's going to have like ice beam, uh, maybe hurricane uh, to abuse in rain as well. Uh, it's basically just going to have stab moves and then two other moves that are going to help it uh, do, you know, more coverage damage or maybe have rain dance on it itself. But it's just going to end up having that in these insane bulky base stats and base, you know, numbers on top of doubling the already decent 85 speed. It's going to be a bulky, unkillable threat with damage boosted rain dance moves and also increased accuracy on its own hurricane. Although not having stab, just the fact that this thing can learn hurricane is kind of insane. This Pokemon's insane. Kingdra's insane. Run it, play it, play a rain dance team. Alright, I spent a lot of time, probably too much time, covering Kingdra, so I'm going to quickly run through some other excruciating Swift Swim threats throughout tons of tiers. Some more OU threats are going to be Kabutops. Some NU threats are going to be things like Omaster, Mantine, Ludicolo, uh, what else? Relicanth is really good, I'm not sure if that's an NU or UU right now. Floatzel can be made good because of Swift Swim, although not great. Seismitoad is an incredible Swift Swim user. And NU, honestly, probably should be borderline UU in my opinion because it's a water ground type that ends up getting Swift Swim, which makes it insane. Uh, it's, yeah, there's just very, 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 very... There's just some powerful Pokemon. Some already powerful Pokemon with some pretty cool, like, powerful typings. Things like Relicanth being water rock. Things like Ludicolo being water grass. Things like Kingdra being water dragon. Mantine being water flying. Oh, man, Seismitoad being water ground. So many, like, really powerful typing Pokemon get access to Swift Swim, which really sends it over the edge. Whew, but I think that covers Swift Swim to the extent that I've wanted it to. It's it's by far, a lot of people consider it the most powerful part of Rain Dance. So I wanted to give it its justice and, you know, really cover it well. Next, we're going to be moving on to Weather Ball quickly. Okay, so Weather Ball is a move that can be learned by a ton of Pokemon and Pokemon Mo, and I mean a ton. It can be learned by each starter, starter Final Evolution in Kanto. So Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard can all learn it. Uh, it's it's learned by an absolute ton of Pokemon, and I might leave a link in the description of Pokemon that can run it, at least from Bulbapedia, but it might not be fully accurate and transfer over accurately 100% to Pokemon Mo. But go ahead and check the description for that. Anyways, Weather Ball is going to be a 50 base power normal special attacking move, but during any weather, and in this you know particular video we're talking about rain, it's going to actually double the damage of Weather Ball. And change its typing to water. So I believe it's going to get that double damage from the transformation while also getting the double damage or the 50% damage increase from Rain Dance. I could be wrong on that, but I believe that's how it works. So it turns into a 100 base power move and then it transforms into a water type move and then also gets the 50% damage increase on top of that. I could be wrong. It could just be doubled to 100 base power and not get the the extra damage uh i could be misreading this but that's how it seems to work based on Bulbapedia. i think weather ball is drastically underused it's definitely used i think it's used actually on pelipper if i'm correct but i think it's definitely an underused move probably one of the most underused powerful moves within pokemon mmo if i'm being quite honest because it's a pretty complicated move to use and it's pretty useless outside of weather uh it's 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 becomes you know a normal type 50 base power special move that's that's pretty abysmal so it's definitely a yeah you learned on uh Pelipper, as you can see here it can be a very powerful move and it adapts to all the weathers you need it to so it can become like a fire type move uh etc etc it, it's very cool um i think it's underused and it can be really powerful and just i think it's important to keep it in mind it can be learned on pokemon like you know like venusaur like i said which if you have rain dance up and let's say you want to throw your you know your venusaur into a rain dance team for whatever reason i don't know having it access to a water type move is at least cool in my opinion or having something like having a pokemon with that to counter a certain rain dance team i think could be really cool but i think it's interesting and important to keep in mind and at least be aware of Anyway, moving on to the next couple of things, which are basically going to be damage changes and percentage changes. Uh, Rain Dance is going to half the power of Solar Beam uh, and Solar Blade. I believe Solar Blade isn't in the move. I think it's like a 6th six, gen move, uh, if I'm correct. But Solar Beam is, at least on paper, 
should be uh, some sort of way to deal with uh, rain dance teams. Like maybe if you could predict the 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 Pokemon setting up rain dance that isn't using Drizzle. Let's say you, let's say you were to play a rain dance team, predict like, hey man, their Pokemon's gonna use rain dance this turn. Let me Solar Beam to you know try to get a lot of damage in and you know get that charge move off. Uh, it doesn't really work like that because it's going to have the power of Solar Beam, which I think is lame. I think I actually really think that Rain shouldn't have the power of Solar Beam. I think it's just like an unneeded uh, power change. Uh, pretty silly, pretty dumb, at least in my opinion. And then moving on to the situational healing moves and the situational kind of recovery moves. So Moonlight, Synthesis, and Morning Sun are situational recovery moves that normally would heal 50% of HP, and they are based on the weather. I believe moonlight increases more in morning. I think they all increase more based on if it's if there's sunny day out or sunlight. Uh, but rain dance is going to go ahead and, and make them all do heal half of what they normally would. So they're going to heal 25% instead of 50%, which is an absolute gut to the move. It basically makes those moves not worth using most of the time, at least in my opinion. The Pokemon that you're using them on is not going to be bulky enough to be able to you know, you're going to be consistently losing HP as opposed to gaining HP over time with those moves, usually getting the 50%. So it, it really negates those those moves entirely, which is can be such an absolute devastation to certain teams. A good example of this, at least an NU, could be Espeon. This, I know this Pokemon can learn Morning Sun, and it can be pretty important on it for its recovery. It can also learn, I think, Grass Knot. So it could potentially be a decent way to counter some uh, some rain dance teams but at the same time it's going to end up hurting its morning sun recovery and it's going to be really damaging that pokemon so it's just another way where rain dance kind of in its existence really hurts its direct counters which can be really frustrating and rain dance is a perfect example of a team or a gameplay style that kind of inhibits interaction it really encourages the pilot as long as the pilot plays correctly it's not a very fun game for the opponent okay but that covers most if not all of the effects of rain dance the only thing i have left to talk about is how long rain dance lasts which is five turns for those who don't know but there is an item called damp rock which extends the duration of rain dance and or drizzle i believe to eight turns instead of five so it's important to know and think about and understand like hey if i want to like is it worth putting a damp rock on my pelipper to extend the turns of rain dance it's an important thing to consider i don't know what the general meta is on that right now on ou but you actually could go ahead and check in the pvp statistics but that covers everything I believe for rain dance if i missed anything please leave it in the comments below i want to get as much information out there as you know as well as possible uh thank you guys so much for watching i hope you learned a ton from this video like this video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't feel free to leave comments questions concerns in the comments section below subscribe for more daily pokemon content ring the bell for notifications join my discord to hang out with some cool dudes and ask me questions all day long uh follow me on twitch and twitter for occasional streams and occasional memes Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic day. Peace.